I know that we have a speaker here that has to jump on a stage. Yes. So should we just dive into him and give him the, the I think chance? so. I think so, because God bless him for taking the time. Jeffrey Hazlett, primetime TV and podcast host, keynote speaker, best-selling author, and global business celebrity waiting to go on stage. And I know there's a whole lot more to say. You can jump in here. Well, let's hear it from him. Jeffrey, do we have you there? Absolutely. And let me, first of all, thanks for making me cry again, watching that video, which I've watched, I don't know, 20, 30 times, to be honest with you, because I remember when you wrote the letter and you told me about it before the book launched and you said, what should we do it? I said, if that's got to be the Ford, that's got to be the Ford. I'm thinking about, it. look, if that's not the Ford, I'm going to come track you down. I'm going to hunt you down. It's got to be the Ford. Here is your daily dose of the ultimate sales machine coming to you from the new edition. Visit ultimatesalesmachine.com to get your copy or multiple copies. I am your host, Amanda Holmes, CEO of Chet Holmes International. What you're about to learn has assisted a quarter of a million businesses to generate billions of dollars, working faster, better, smarter. So <laughs> I got to tell you, I knew your father. I met him back right after I finished the first season of Celebrity Apprentice. I was on a stage in Ontario with the CEO of Southwest and your dad was speaking and it was right when he had launched the book. And I remember him giving me a signed copy backstage and then asking me to watch his speech and critique him. And of which when he walked up, I said, you don't need any critiquing, just keep doing what you do. And he would be proud of you. Listen, I'm just, you, listen, you put the quarter in and you get to go for the full ride. So I'm going to just keep going for a minute here. <laughs> Uh, Thank you. And then you're showing a new technique, which is just what your dad would have done. He would have stayed with the times, even though he would have been a, a baby boomer, boomer and a, or a millennial on a baby boomer body, I think is probably what he would have probably been. But nonetheless, really showed some real tenacity. You add 100 pages to this book. You think the book, like the Bible, can't be improved, right? And there you went and did it. You added 100 pages of unbelievable, just great content. And this is a must-buy book for everybody. If you haven't bought this book yet, you need to go do it. And I just want to congratulate you. I know that your dad's looking down right now and just proud. His chest is out there. He's bawling. And uh, just like all of us, we're just so proud to just be in the same room with you and with a wonderful legacy. So thank you for doing what you're doing. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. Oh my gosh, <laughs> let's dive into you. I wanna hear more from you. I, when I think of you, I think of that wonderful quote of never waste a great crisis. <laughs> and you being the former CMO of Kodak and the experience of watching that organization at, can you share, because I know that everybody on this call is looking at what's about to happen and wondering, where are we going? Oh, yeah. Are we going to get through this? Did you, can you share a little bit of what was happening then and how you, because you've just catapulted after that, you've made such success off of something that majority of people would feel ashamed about. I feel that, wow, you are amazing. What you created out of that tragedy. I really appreciate it. It was a, probably the best experience of my life to go and work for a fortune 100 company, become, I bought and sold over 250 businesses in my career, billions of dollars in transaction. And here I became the chief marketing officer, one of the most iconic brands at the time, and certainly still one of the most iconic brands. Unfortunately, the company didn't follow the red book, didn't get the, <laughs> excuse me, didn't get the update, right? <laughs> and so therefore they, they followed the plan and believed that film was the way to go when it was really a new digital world that was around. And so it was up to folks like myself to come in and work in the company and do what we best could save what we could save and do the things that we had to do and get it where it's at. Now today it's on a great platform doing about $9 billion, throwing about $2 billion to the bottom line, but certainly not the iconic company it was at one time, $187 billion wow. at one time, 493,000 employees. And at that time, I was managing a budget of 17 billion just for marketing alone. So, you know, you learn scale, you learn a lot of different things. And it was probably one of the best experiences I ever had that gave me some unbelievable opportunities. And that's what it's about. So, you know, you take the tried and true, use what you can and adapt it. And we moved them into a lot of different areas. And I'm very proud of the work that we did. Would have liked to have seen a better outcome because after I left the company, certainly without question, we knew that it was going to have a tougher fate, especially in 2008, 2009. And of course, I've been away from the company since 2010. So what was a good takeaway that you could give to anybody that's looking at this and seeing that there's a transition that has to happen for me? 
what could well, you do? A couple of things. One, just to get back to, we're going to have some tough times. Remember during the toughest times, some of the greatest brands have been born. Uber was founded during their last recession. Airbnb. Who would have thought that you would invite people over to your house, stay at your house, sit naked on your couch, and you would get paid for it? No <laughs> one would have thought the thing, right? So there's lots of opportunities coming for us in the recessions and don't waste a good crisis because for a lot of people that are in this room, you are going to do well and you're going to do extremely well and smart people always do well and hustlers always do great. And so you want to learn that. So that's one of the biggest things. But the biggest takeaway that I have for somebody that's making a transition, remember there's there, I used to sit in a room with lots of CMOs, like the CMO of GE, the CMO of, of Exxon, the CMO of major companies, much bigger than our company was at the time. And I one of the things I always learned was no matter how big you think you are, there's always someone bigger. Mm -hmm. All right. So go find the next big opportunity for you. Go find the next big learning that you need to do. Go find the next big partner. There's always someone bigger. And that's what I learned at Kodak. Let me ask a question. Bill Engvall is a comedian and he has his famous thing. He says, there's your sign. Yeah. In business, sometimes the sign is when things are really going bad that you re really need to power in. And I'm curious if you feel that there's a point in businesses and at people's lives also that they need to look for the signs in order to make some big moves toward changes they need to make that they've been not making, putting off until tomorrow. You gotta go, if you can't, if you don't see the sign, make your own sign. I remember <laughs> when COVID first hit us and for all most of us, it, it became something like it was a big wall. We had to make some major changes to move right. forward. But I don't know about you, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse. I don't even know how to sew a mask when we were looking at that. And I said, our job is really to really to be business first responders. And that's what we are. Hmm. And that's what most of the people at the tops of these uh, the squares that are going to be talking and visiting with you today, they're some of the best business minds in the world. So I'll guarantee you that we've all missed signs. The key thing is to go and start and do something, to become that business first responder, to become that person that says, I'm going to do something, I'm going to solve this problem. And by solving this problem, we find a way to be able to do better and better each and every day. So if you don't see a sign, make your sign. I yeah, love that. I, it really. makes me want to pull out a sign that I was carrying, but I will wait until a little bit later. <laughs> For those that know, no. For those that don't, just wait. Last question. Last question. Well, first of all, write that down. Business first responders. That's brilliant. It is. It it's really so is. Good. It's just, it's an action. It's an action move. Yeah. I love it. It's good stuff. And you're, you have been on the go nonstop. The amount of books that you've released that have been bestsellers, the stages that you have stood on. What fills Jeffrey's cup. I'm just curious for those that are feeling like, man, I really need a reset right now. The biggest thing in the world for me is to head back to my place in South Dakota. And everybody says, what do you want to be? I'm in five business hall of fames done. You know what I do sit on 16 boards, four of them publicly traded companies continue to do a lot and I'm enjoying it. That's what makes it done. But in the end, much like you are Chet's daughter, my goal is to one day, the best title that I can ever have is father, husband, and grandfather. And so to me, those are the things that refill my cup. So no matter when I'm down, no matter what happens, yesterday I was feeling a little down. It was like, I was feeling sorry for myself. I'd been traveling all day, gave my gave two speeches in the day, did so many interviews, was on the phone constantly, trying to raise $20 million to finish up this capital raise that I'm doing. And you know what I did? I picked up the phone and called my granddaughters who were five and seven just to hear their voice. And there was nothing like that. And I'm ready to go again. And so that's the thing that inspires me every day. What can I do to make it easier for them as they go in throughout their life and what they want to do with their plans? That's the real measure of what I want to do. And I love this man. He's a good man. That's, I have the same uh, thing, Jeffrey, you. by the way. Those, kids, those grandkids will thank do it every time. I tell you what, and I've got two little ones of five and seven. I call them the girlies. When they come over, I'm living in a Barbie hell. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> Nick's <laughs> Barbies all over the floor. It's not how I thought I would spend my adulthood, but there you go. But that'll keep you young. That'll keep you young. Exactly. What anyway, a, what congratulations, a, congratulations. The content that you added to this, the way in which you're doing this, the way you're rolling out, it's without a doubt already a bestseller. We know that, but everybody, the key thing for, I ask everybody on this call to do, go and write a review today. Go right now to Amazon, buy the book, buy the copies, do everything you have to do. And I know that we're going to throw in some stuff from our C-suite network. We're glad to do it. Anything I can do, but we want to continue to make this a huge double bestseller. <laughs> It's awesome. 
Thank you so much. My brother also, if he, at any point, Jordan, you want to bring out Chester, because my brother named his son after our father. So Chester is somewhere, which we have to lovingly praise him at some point, like Simba, because <laughs> I love that child so much. I've never experienced where you just want to eat a child's face until <laughs> I had a nephew, and then it's Chester. Oh my gosh. Jeffrey Hazlett, thank you very much. That was fantastic. Gosh, this is truly amazing. This is truly amazing to me. I've been doing this for 30 years, and what I'm gathering from this is, yes, all these gems of knowledge and wisdom and understanding are very important, but there's an energy and a spirit and something that is just different about what I've been experiencing with you and from the people, the love that they give you. And it's a blessing to you, Thank but you. it's a blessing to all of us. That's the ripple effect that goes out because what I feel like that Amanda has added to this book is something that her dad wanted to, and I believe that's chapter 13. Yeah. And you shared something so dear and near to your heart that was near and dear to your dad's heart too. And I actually told her chapter 13 should have been chapter one. And, uh, but there's. You can read it that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just, there's a spirit about business. And when you meet somebody in business that has that spirit, that, that beautiful something that we don't even know how to put words on a lot of times, you want some of that. And that's what you've sown into this mm. amazing, really, it's a, the navigation tool for life as well as business. Thank you. Make sure to get your copy or copies at theultimatesalesmachine.com. There's a lot of special bonuses that you can't get going to Amazon. So make sure you check it out at ultimatesalesmachine.com.